This should come as no surprise to you, but nobody at Marvel knows what to do with Doctor Strange. I know, it's like the sun rose in the east or something, you know? That, that the sky is blue, perhaps. That grass is green and cats and dogs generally don't like each other. All brand new front page news. Dan Rather is going to come out of retirement to tell us all, I'm sure. Marvel star Benedict Cumberbatch tells us that he currently has no clue about Doctor Strange's franchise future. Quote, I know as little as you. We can get into the interview about his current series coming to Netflix uh, uh, called Eric. But really, this is the big takeaway from the whole interview is that Doctor Strange is dead in the water. The main actor has no clue. They haven't even approached him about like, hey, do you want to show up in Moon Knight? Do you want to maybe like swing in on the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie because we'll just tie all the franchises together? You know, I, at this point, I'm waiting for him to show up in Doctor Who, maybe. Because as Benedict has indicated, there is no future for this character right now. Which I think is wrong. When you really consider what was done to him in Endgame, everything since Infinity War has done nothing but try to wipe its butt with Doctor Strange. And I don't think that's fair. This is a, not only a powerful character, but a very influential one in the story they're about to tell with Secret Wars. The Illuminati plays no small part in what goes on in Secret Wars. In fact, they're part of the reason, well, at least a couple of them, there have been multiple Secret Wars, let's put it that way. Battle World is not a one-off, you know? They're, but the Illuminati are able to organize during these events and thus able to either thrust a, a, an effective attack against most likely Doctor Doom or whoever has, has caused the incursion to begin with. And we keep hearing about the incursion. We heard about this at the end of Doctor Strange Mom. That's Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Now, you know, someone in the writer's room thought they were very clever when they said, aha, we'll call it Doctor Strange Mom. They thought they were very clever when they thought that up. I just think it's a cruel joke, really, because she is a strange mom, after all. A very strange mom. And it isn't about Doctor Strange. It is about that strange mom. It should have been like the grim adventures of Stephen and, uh, oh gosh, I forgot her name suddenly. Um... Scarlet Witch's real name. My goodness, I've forgotten her name. You'll forgive me. Please put it down in the comments below what her name is. I'll eventually remember it later on in the video or not. Uh, Wanda. Right, Wanda. Okay, you can put it down in the comments. Give me all kinds of crap for forgetting that. But yeah, you call it the Grim Adventures of Steven and Wanda, right? You know, just bring the, the guy that voiced the character from the cartoon, the Grim character from the cartoon, back and just have them go around and having these wild and wacky adventures because that's basically what that was. That whole movie was like a, a 10 minute episode of Billy and Mandy stretched out into a two hour movie. And I mean, I'm not giving um, Sam Raimi any crap. I mean, really, he's given like a, a lump of coal to work with to create a movie that belongs in this franchise, which could be to its detriment, honestly. But he did his best. You can only polish a turd so much. It's still just a polished turd, which is what we see is the like. I don't know, I guess the consequence, you'd say, of what happened in Doctor Strange, Mom, is that audiences just aren't clamoring for Doctor Strange. Why? Because he isn't the central focus of his own franchise. Wouldn't you know? They like Moon Knight. Why do they like Moon Knight? Because Moon Knight is the central focus of his franchise. Why do they like Daredevil? Because Daredevil's the center of his franchise. Hmm. Hmm. Why do they like Wanda? Because she's the center of her franchise, and they've already said they're going to resurrect her. So they have a plan for the Scarlet Witch, but the Sorcerer Supreme, they're just absolutely in the dark. It brings us back to what Anthony Mackie said a few years ago about how Stan Lee had created so much, the writers at Marvel had created so much, that the MCU has nothing to add. Well, then what are you doing adding? There's obviously great stories that you have the intellectual rights to just one-to-one -one transfer. But the real reason why they don't do that, the real reason why Doctor Strange is dead in the water, you might think it's politics, you might think it's feminism, you might think it's Kathleen Kennedy with her big booty squishing out everybody else's franchises along with Star Wars. But that's not the case. The reality is, is that they don't want to pay royalties. At the end of the day, Disney needs to turn a profit, despite how spend-happy Bob Iger is with all this messaging stuff he's up to, okay? They have to turn a profit or else the investors are going to walk. Or worse, Perlman will end up with it. You know, Perlmutter will end up with it. Uh-oh, you know? And this is where we're at, is that they can't turn a profit with Doctor Strange while obeying the edict that they want to push on other people. 
why they the socio-political engineering. Doctor Strange stands as a single man who is repentant of his sins, but acknowledges that sin is part of life. And he takes on the responsibility of commit, committing horrible sins. Like, I, I, I can't, I'm not going to tell you that Doctor Strange is any Superman kind of moral character. Doctor Strange very much drifts into the gray area of morality, which is sort of a characteristic of the Marvel properties. Again, you'd think they'd have a heyday with all of this. This is just Tumblritis with, like, glitter, you know? Magic, magic glitter, magic missile, magic missile. It's just Tumblr stuff just on steroids, you know? But no, they can't glorify a repentant man even. He's not even proud. Most of the time, Doctor Strange is just miserable because of the decisions he's made and the, the burdens he's taken on in order to achieve cosmic balance, you know? The loneliness of being the Sorcerer Supreme. It, it sucks. You have ultimate power. You can play N64 anytime you want, but there's just no time. There's always cosmic chaos leaking in from every corner everywhere. You'd think, again, this is great fodder. This is everything that, like the 80s uh, dark crystal labyrinth stuff was made of. I mean, you can, you can get a David Bowie lookalike now and have Doctor Strange stuck in the labyrinth, and he's got to save a princess, and we don't even know who the hell the princess is. He's just got to save her. But they won't do that. They won't give you even a simplistic story like that that you and I can just enjoy. A, a wizard being stuck in a magical labyrinth run by a goblin king. Wow, that's, that's really fun already. But Disney's never going to do it because it rewards your expectations of what a man should do, and they can't have that. They can't have that. They must subvert what you understand. Now, I said earlier, they can't do this because they have, it isn't because of their sociopolitical engineering. Now, what I want to say about that is that BlackRock pushes this stuff, so they can't turn a profit. If they could turn a profit on it, they would do it, as we've seen with the uh, Echo series. They attempted to turn a profit on that. They learned their lesson. Bob Iger immediately admitted in this last quarterly earnings call to the investors that uh, they're not going to be putting out as much Marvel content. And yeah, I can assure you that is because of how abysmal Echo turned out to be and how many rewrites, reshoots, and all this other stuff they've had to do with the Captain America Strange New Worlds, uh, excuse me, Brave New World uh, a movie. Sorry, there's just so many new worlds out there right now. There's so much new world going on. Isn't that weird? Just all this new world stuff talk going on. It's almost like there's a... Great reset or something happening where a new world is coming. Hmm, isn't that weird? Strange that they would use superheroes to tell that story, right? The moral arbiters of PSAs, don't smoke cigarettes, don't do cracks, stay in school and drink your milk, live in pods and eat the bugs, right? Hmm, I don't know. But they can't turn a profit on this. This is the problem, is that... Doctor Strange is a character that if they were allowed to express him in any manner that turns him into the hero, he would reward what you expect out of a man. They can't have that right now. When you look at the MCU, every male character, even Loki, is some guilt-ridden or tortured or angry person that is being scolded. Even the Doctor, uh, David Tennant's Doctor, and even uh, Shudi Gatwa, or Nakuti if you prefer, is, is being scolded by female or female presenting characters. And this is where we find ourselves in the current status of Doctor Strange. They tried this with America Chavez being the female representation and the story focusing on Wanda, and audiences were still a little soft on it, you know? It didn't do great in the post reviews, and even today people make fun of it for the pizza balls and the name. I don't think people really even remember what happened inside of it, short of a few video game platformer scenes that happened there in that uh, nether realm when they were trying to get the big glowy thing that saves the day as opposed to the purple glowy thing that's going to destroy the day, you know? Because it follows the, the Marvel formula that Scorsese was complaining about. If you think about it, every Marvel movie you can, that's come out recently or probably in the history of the franchise, the big blue glowy thing has to be dealt with the big purple glowy thing is the bad thing, and the big red thing could be, big glowy red thing could be helpful or it could be evil. But most of the time it's evil. And that's just, that, there's, there's just too many formulaic uh, pushes inside of this franchise now. And Doctor Strange would prob probably suffered from a lot of that in the last uh, iteration. Despite Sam Raimi's attempts to add so much spice and intrigue to it, it still fits the Marvel formula of bright, glowy things are dangerous and girl power, I guess.
I would think in a movie about Doctor Strange, it would center on Doctor Strange. Having him battle Wanda is a very interesting idea, right? They, had the, they were off to a right track, but the problem was is they didn't want to make Wanda a total villain. And in the process of doing that, they completely neutered what Doctor Strange is capable of as a character. We saw him completely sidelined in Endgame, playing lifeguard, holding a waterfall back. The whole battle. He's just there, waterbending. Like Katara. I don't, I don't understand. This is the Sorcerer Supreme. He can't freeze that, that waterfall. He can't transform that water into rock. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm at a loss. And it seems that Marvel is too. Because again, if they let Doctor Strange be a man, if they let him go out and adventure, save the day, reward your expectations of men, that defeats what BlackRock is paying Disney, what, what Bob Iger and Bob Chappick have totally embraced there at Disney. It defeats it entirely. They can't have it. You saw this expressed in Furiosa. Every male character in that movie outshined Furiosa completely. They deliberately only gave her something like 34 lines in that movie. But they made the whole thing about her, putting audiences almost to sleep until the action scenes came up. Great world building, guys, but the vessel to do that in is not so great. And this is what we see with Doctor Strange. They're going to continue forcing this narrative of girl power. It's why we hear that Wanda's getting resurrected. Guess who's not got a franchise future according to the franchise lead? And Benedict Cumberbatch is not getting any younger, by the way. He's going to end up, you know, crossing that line where Doctor Strange is going to be Grandpa Strange. And they're going to have to find a new actor if they even try to pursue this. It makes you wonder why they even introduced the character at all into the franchise in the first place. Was it just for jokes? Was it just to turn him into a lifeguard? Was it all to advertise the concept of pizza balls? I don't know. But what I do know is I'll see you in the next video. And until then, good luck out there.